honestly never thought I would cover a Marvel movie in my Spooktoberfest, but here we are. Last year, Marvel decided to have a crack at a straight-up monster movie, and frankly, it's it's far better than it has any right to be. Um, this, this movie's not going to be for everyone. I'll say that straight off the bat. Not because of the content. Like, it's not too scary or not scary enough. The reason this movie is not for everyone is because it's a love letter to the old Universal Monster movies from the 1920s and 30s. Like, right down to the acting, the cinematography. Like, this movie is black and white. It is that much of an homage that they filmed it black and white. So, be prepared going in if you do want to watch this. The story is full of tropes, but in a good way. Like, if you are going to write a love letter to old monster movies, you need two things. One, old things. Two, monsters. Werewolf by Night has plenty of both of those things. The plot's pretty simple. Um, All of the world's most competent monster slayers are drawn to the gothic mansion of Ulysses Bloodstone, where over the course of a night, they are told they're going to compete to slay a monster and each other, like Battle Royale style, to own a powerful relic called the Bloodstone. Our point of view in this film is taken from the hunter Jack, who is played by the charismatic Gail Garcia Bernal. He's from Coco. um, Who seems to have a slightly different motive than the other contestants. Now, this movie isn't scary. Just like if you watch some of the old Universal Monster movies now, they're also not scary. But that doesn't mean it's not fun. I don't think The Mummy with Brendan Fraser is scary. But I fucking love that movie because it's really fun. And, and let's be honest, also because everyone in that movie is a bit of a dime piece. Um, this movie won't freak you out. And it, it doesn't have to. It's, what it should do is make you excited for the possibilities of Marvel jumping into the horror sphere. The potential budgets that might be thrown into horror from this is amazing. It, this was fairly well received too, so I'm hoping they do more. It is, it, it is one of the most fun Marvel pieces I've seen in years. And it's less than an hour long. If you're busy, that's a bonus. It's actually, it's probably one of the few horror movies I wa- I've watched that I, I think would benefit from being longer. The design of the monster they are hunting in this film is fucking phenomenal. I, I actually found out that it is from the beso- behind the scenes videos. It's actually a guy in a suit with full animatronics and everything. And it's just touched up by CGI. It looks amazing. It's awesome. I'm glad they used practical effects because it looks fantastic. And they even got the guy who did the practical effects to play the monster himself. That's awesome. Imagine getting to build the animatronics and the set and the suit and then jump in and play it yourself. That's cool. That's so fucking cool. Um, director Michael Giacciano is actually... He's actually a composer by trade. Um... But he really wanted to direct, so Marvel gave him a shot, and he did a phenomenal job. Like he, he obviously wanted to be a director. He had, he's got the chops for it for sure. I hope he tackles some of the other old school monsters IP, because um, he he respects it. You know he respects it. I I listened to an interview with him, and they asked him about the werewolf transition transformation in this because it happens off screen, and he basically said, "We're not going to be able to do it as good as the best." werewolf movies do it like American Werewolf in London that sort of thing so we did it off camera that's that's the correct approach don't go in there and try to do it if you don't think you can and botch it know your limits he he went out of his way to make sure too that this movie was a standalone thing even though apparently Marvel wanted to connect it to a bunch of existing IPs and stuff that's going on now he he stood up and was like no this is I want this to be a standalone thing and that's He's standing up for the existence of standalone horror in the MCU. That's fucking awesome. Yes, the acting is over the top. Yes, it's it's in black and white. Yes, it's not that scary. But it is fun. And I think that the fact that it is in black and white means you can get away with some of the gore in these action scenes because there's no blood. Like, everything's in black and white, so it's not gory. Even though it's an MA, it's not gory. I think this is a decent pick for a family movie night as like the first 4A into like the MMA rating. Um, It's awesome. If you want your kids to like have a bit of love for old school monster movies, here's here's a good way to get them in. It's there's at the end too. There's this cracking homage to the Wizard of Oz that I loved. Um, Who is this for? I obviously straight off the bat. 
If you like the old school monster movies, Frankenstein, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Mummy, all those 1920s, 30s monsters, this is so up your alley. This was made specifically for you, dude. Get it. Um, you want to see one of the coolest monsters in the MCU? This does that. If you want a fun, quick horror movie, it's like 50 minutes. In and out. Um, I don't recommend watching this if you want something serious or scary. This knows exactly how the style has to be. It's over the top. There's some weird comedic bits that are great, but are obviously they're over the top for this style of movie. If you hate black and white movies, this is in black and white. If that already turns you off, don't go into this one. Marvel, let Michael make more horror movies. The fun that could be had is fucking boundless. I would love modern remakes of some of the older Universal Monsters, especially because they've aged, most of them have aged terribly. If it's, he will do it with a loving hand. Just give him, just give him the resources. As always, thanks for watching. I appreciate it immensely. And I'll see you all tomorrow for another review. Peace.